So many people. <laughs> it's great. Um, yeah, so uh, my name is Sneaky Lindot von Bar, uh, and I am an artist and an animation director, and from time to time also a costume designer. Uh, together with my colleague Niklas Nilsson, we made, for example, uh, the first costumes of the artist Fever Ray, and also. Uh, for David Bowie's uh, video Black Star uh, two years ago, I think. Um, but I'm mainly here to talk a bit about my films. Um, I um, have made three films so far, um, uh, which is animated films in analog stop motion technique. Um, it's uh, Toward and Toward, uh, Toward the Toward from 2014, no, sorry, 2010. And it's the Bath House from 2014, Simhall. And also uh, The Burden, Min Bada, uh, that had its premiere in 2017. So um, I will, um, yeah, I, I've been doing this for about 10 years and um, it like each film takes me about two and a half years to make. Um, I don't know if you're like familiar with stop motion technique at all. Um, it's basically like this that you, at least in my case, I um, uh, make models and puppets, uh, puppets like this, for example. This is from Bathhouse, um, and I <coughs> I move them a tiny, tiny bit, and then I take a picture, and then I move them again, uh, take one more picture with a still camera, and then there's 25 frames uh, for each second. And like on a really good day, I think you can animate like three to five seconds. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, very uh, time consuming to say the list. <laughs> it's very special, but I also, I think it's, I think it's definitely worth it because it's a very, it's like the, the aesthetics is very special. Um, and the films are about 10 to 14 minutes each also. So it's like, uh, yeah, it's basically like 45 minutes for in 10 years. So yeah. <laughs> um, but I will, um, mainly tell you about the burden and how that film happened, uh, basically. Uh, the burden is uh, a uh, like apocalyptic musical, uh, about 14 minutes. Um, and uh, it's, um, yeah, it's a film that I uh, wanted to make for a long time, but I felt that I needed to uh, develop my technical skills a bit first, uh, because there's a lot of singing and dancing included, which is uh, kind of a challenge when working with animation. Uh, I can also tell you about uh, my films that, like all of the puppets uh, are, uh, uh, are animals, um, which I kind of enjoy, partly because I don't really, like human puppets because I feel like they are very scary, <laughs> to be honest. It's like um, kind of, I don't know, some kind of uncanny valley thing that happens that scares me a lot. And I also like to see my films as some kind of modern fables. Um, and these uh, puppets also have like this kind of skeleton inside that's uh, made with aluminum wire. So like when you 
when you move it a bit, it kind of stays in its position, which is kind of important. Uh, so I can pass this through if you want to like feel it up. You can <laughs> take your take your time. Um, yeah. So um, the burden had its uh, uh, international premiere in Cannes in 2017, and uh, for the last year, it's been traveling the world. It's been super intense, and it feels a bit almost like embarrassing to speak about, but it's just been going so well. I can't really put it any other way. It's been uh, at like kind of all of the festivals, such as Sundance and, uh, uh, and Annecy, the biggest uh, uh, animation festival uh, there is, and um, Toronto and uh, Clermont Ferrand in France, which is the biggest short film festival in the world. And it has also won about 30 awards, uh, which is uh, crazy. <laughs> uh, for example, uh, the main award in Annecy. Um, also the, the main, the international short film award in Toronto. And uh, also, of course, uh, Guldbagge for best Swedish short film just a month ago. Uh, so yeah, it's been, uh, it's been very, it's been a very interesting year, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, I can also maybe just pass along, since the burden is also, since the project has been so big, I, and I'm also, I also work as an artist, I have also been exhibiting the models and puppets uh, for a while and uh, like widen the project a bit making it more as a some kind of art project. So for example, we have also made a vinyl record uh, with uh, a few like still images inside and stuff. So I can also pass this along if you want to just see a few pictures. <coughs> and you will also see the full length film today. So that's kind of the, uh, the crescendo of the morning, <laughs> I guess. I will just talk a little bit first and then, uh, then you will see it. Um, so the idea of making that film was um, to uh, basically I wanted to make some kind of tribute to all of the uh, really nice old Hollywood musicals that I loved to watch growing up. Uh, I had a huge crush on Gene Kelly <laughs> and uh, I loved these films like Singing in the Rain and Anchors Away and I really wanted to I wanted to to make some kind of inspired uh, like a musical inspired by this kind of Hollywood musicals. Uh, but I really felt the need as well to add some kind of darkness into that theme, like some kind of much more unpleasant theme within that theme, because it would just feel weird to, to make a, a pitchy musical with nothing that itches or anything. So um, I, um, I chose to kind of um, shed some light upon low paid work. Uh, that was kind of the main story. Um, like the work that kind of happens all around you all the time, but that is seldom paid attention to, like night cleaning a hamburger restaurant or selling things over the phone in like a depressing call center office. Uh, these kind of very uh, depressing kind of works that like many of us have, have been doing, because that's kind of how, how to do life. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, so the film is about these employees, and also I also wanted to add some kind of just general existential anxiety and uh, boredom, and like our littleness in the universe. Um, all of this combined in a nice, I don't know, cheerful tap dancing uh, uh, <laughs> context. <laughs> uh, so why not? <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and like, as I said, this film also took two and a half years to make. And um, uh, I do work a lot with the pre-productions uh, for my films. And I always start actually with the actual like the surroundings, I'm really, really interested in the surroundings. And uh, sometimes it's even 
more interesting to me than, than the, the characters or the story. Uh, so for <coughs> the burden, I, uh, I wanted it to be enacted in this kind of like marketplace or I don't know, there, there's no, nothing, it's like, it doesn't even really have a name, this kind of areas, but it's like shopping mall slash marketplace, like this kind of weird satellites that you find beside big highways that might include like a hamburger restaurant or, or a long-term hotel in this case, and um, also like uh, a supermarket and just these huge venues just being like tossed out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, that you kind of, it's just like really fascinating because it's just something that you, it's like very un uncharming and very generic and but you, you just like, it's just perfectly designed for you to just drive in, consume and drive out again. So these places have always like fascinated me a lot uh, in a weird way, I don't know, it's like, it kind of scares me but I also think, it's like, I think this is kind of, therapeutical for me to, <laughs> to like work with them for my films and then uh, I find them more, much more interesting when it's, when it's done. Um, so what I did was uh, uh, very much just driving up and down the, the highway here in Stockholm, like the E4, and uh, uh, stopping in these places and taking a lot of pictures. Uh, because as you will see in this film and, and my previous films as well, I I really enjoy to um, uh, to build these models as as realistic as possible. It's really important to me to get to get this like authentical feeling, um, and for that you really need to do a lot of documentation, right? To keep all of these uh, tiny details and stuff. That that's what makes it real, I think. Um, and um, yeah, so <coughs> I, uh, I went on for like a year or so making the models, actually. Uh, I can tell you that building uh, a supermarket containing like hundreds and hundreds of tiny food boxes, that was like something that I, uh, I'll think twice before doing again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you will see. Jag hade en så täckt dröm Det var precis som nu Fast det var en dröm Jag var på jobbet och frontade Som vanligt, precis som nu Also, for example, for the last scene in the film, the final scene, and also for the just outdoor scenes in general, uh, I made a, a model that's like an outdoor model that's about like two and a half meters in every direction. So it's, uh, uh, it's huge. Uh, and it's also made in a much smaller scale. So it's like uh, the, the people are like this instead of that size. Um, so yeah, it was uh, it was very challenging for sure, um, and um, <clears throat> then of course uh, the music uh, was very important for this project, and uh, I really wanted to have the music uh, originally made for the film, of course. So I asked the composer Hans Appelqvist, also a composer and super talented artist, Hans Appelqvist, uh, to, um, to write the music, um, especially for this film. And uh, like uh, containing his own personal style, but also inspired by the old school musicals like uh, West Side Story. And so I, I just sent him a lot of YouTube clips and a lot of uh, songs from these films and he, uh, interpreted it in a very special way, uh, which became, I think, like the most strong part of the film. I think it's just 
fantastisk. Vill du teckna våran trygghetsgaranti? Prova våran nöjdhetsgaranti. Inga dolda kostnader. Ingen bindningstid. Första månaden gratis. Du erbjuder vi även. Bredbandstelefoni. Ingen faktureringskostnad. Rättefritt. Inga dolda avgifter. Rättefritt. Ingen portoavgift. And... Um, <clears throat> For the song lyrics, I uh, uh, actually asked Martin Luke, the Swedish comedian and author, to um, to write the lyrics because I, I felt that he's uh, like the text I uh, texts I've uh, uh, read from him is uh, just it has like this kind of dry sense of humor that I really enjoy. Um, so I kind of I asked him to yeah to basically write the song lyrics according to my instructions. Um, uh, like, what are the overall atmosphere, what, what are the characters thinking, what are they wanting from life, and so on. Um, and then uh, we <laughs> actually, <laughs> I, I thought it would be really important to, to, um, uh, to, to keep this very authentic sound from like the old school musicals by um, recording the music live. So I kind of actually just kind of killed the budget from day one by um, uh, <laughs> by hiring like a 15 person orchestra to uh, to record this music, uh, which was kind of the best thing I ever done, but also kind of the most stupid thing <laughs> at the same time. Uh, but I, I'm really happy about the uh, about the outcome. It, it really it's it's uh, it's a huge difference, actually. Uh, to make music like that. Um, <coughs> and also the humor group uh, Klungan uh, recorded all of the voices. So there are four people making all of the voices. And then we have kind of uh, made them a little bit different in autotunes. Uh, <coughs> mostly because I, I kind of wanted the, like also for all of my films, I'm not really interested in if the characters are like male or female. I always want to make them s like kind of genderless uh, because they are animals and it's not like very important since yeah, we all are animals and like the only thing that kind of, well, according to me, I think like the, mo the most like different things that we have are like our clothes and our styles and stuff, but the voices should be that different. So um, that's what I did. And um, <coughs> then um, we started animating. Um, and as I said, like uh, animating dance scenes uh, is really, really hard because like, it's really hard to just make that up in your head. Uh, you kind of need good references for, uh, uh, for this kind of movements uh, to make it look real. So uh, I asked two really good um, choreographers, uh, Denise Holland-Betke and Seppi Dar Hosseini, uh, to um, make dance routines, basically, and uh, then uh, uh, record them, like, with their video cameras. With your cam camera, cell phone, video, yeah. <laughs> with their cell phones, yes. Um, so that we actually had live footage of the dancing especially the tap dancing, because like tap dancing are, it's nothing that you just come up with <laughs> in your head when animating. It's like really complicated. Um, so they recorded themselves um, and then we had the live action footage that we kind of analyzed when animating, like looking at it frame by frame and then uh, uh, animating kind of the same way. And uh, yeah, for example, the, uh, the guy who made this uh, uh, tap dancing scene at the hamburger restaurant that you will that you're about to see i think the the scene is about like uh, one minute but it took him i think it took him over two months to to animate that scene because it's so uh, yeah it's very complicated basically <laughs> Um, 
and all together I think we animated for a year or so. Um, it was like a lot of challenges, uh, just like both technical challenges and also sometimes you you can see like it's eight puppets at the same time uh, dancing at the same time. So just doing that is of course uh, a huge thing. Um, yeah, so you will see. Um, and we, uh, we had like, I think it's important to at least speak a little bit about this, that we had a really, really bad budget for this project. Uh, it was, a huge struggle to finish this film. Um, I think we needed at least 150,000 euros, uh, but we actually got like 75,000. Uh, so, which was, I mean, it was all my fault that I kind of continued working even though uh, we didn't have the money for it. Uh, but I also uh, paid the price by not getting paid at all uh, for two and a half years. So it was, uh, I mean, even though I don't demand that much money, it's nice to be able to pay the rent from time to time. <laughs> so it was, uh, yeah, it was a struggle. Um, and I was really angry when we finished the film. <laughs> I'm much less angry now since it's been, I'm, I'm also like, I'm also really happy about the result and I, I'm really happy about like being able to finish it, but it was, it wasn't all uh, good times. Um, and uh, I think the lesson I, yes? But, but when you win prize, is there any money in building Guldbaggen like that or any other? Guldbaggen is just too huge. You don't need any money when you win Guldbaggen. I think that's actually the thing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, a, a, few, a few awards comes with money, uh, not all. Um, but like for short films, it's really hard because short films are, um, there's like no money at all in like, no, you really need to have a budget for it before you start because um, compared to like feature films, you can at least people, best case people pay to get to the cinema, but, but short films, they don't do that. You know, it's, it doesn't have that kind of platform at all. So it's, um, but yeah, of course, a little money if you're lucky and win the right awards. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, like a lot of good things have has come with this, with this film, like just uh, for me in my career, of course. So I'm really happy about it. But, but I, I, I just think that the lesson I've learned is that like in Stockholm, in Sweden, it's, um, uh, you can't really get the money to make this kind of advanced animation because it's just, uh, it costs too much and Sweden is not really um, prepared to, to pay for it, uh, I think. It's, and I, I think it's very, very much a matter of, um, uh, of um, uh, like how you see animation, like in, in our culture compared to, uh, for example, compared to France, because in France, like animation is a part of like the highbrow culture. and. Uh, it's nothing strange at all with having like a huge budget for uh, uh, animated short film for grown-ups. Uh, while in Sweden, I think we tend to um, pair up animation much more with children's culture and other things that are not allowed to cost anything. <laughs> um, so uh, it's a huge difference. And I've competed against, yeah, like foreign films that has have had like you know ten times the budget as I did, and it's uh, that's nothing strange at all. So, but I don't know. I mean, I, I think I, I'm I'm kind of optimistic still. I think it's uh, maybe it's getting better, and uh, I think uh, um, I'm kind of looking into right now to to make a, an animated feature. Uh, uh, for grown-ups, or like not porn or anything, but <laughs> just like uh, <laughs> like sounds so weird. Something just like a little bit more unpleasant and not like very family friendly, uh, but like uh, some kind of animated horror movie maybe. Uh, so that's what I'm looking into right now, and and yeah, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I'm I'm at least hopeful. Um, so um, yeah, I uh, I think I will just let you watch the film now and. 
I don't know if we have like a few minutes over, I, I, I can answer questions if you have any after the film maybe. Um, what do you say? Okay, let's do it. <laughs>